glad to share with you my testimony of how I came to know Christ and what Christ has been doing into my life. I get my blood from two different veins, a Ugandan father and a Rwandan mother. I'm a third born among ten children. And it was through that community that I knew how to think about God. The usual way we used to do it was the prayers of every Sunday and every night before you go to sleep. It created an attitude in me, in a limited sense, but of course a sense of a being that we can pray to and also answers our prayers. My life with Christ has been of fluctuations of which I can't recall when they began. But two things uh, of which I recall in my life when I look at it retrospectively is the influence and a constant and consistent voice from God to myself personally. <coughs> when I was coming here to Tinder, my father posted a photo on Facebook. It was saying, the boy told the bishop he wants to become a bishop. And the bishop said, granted. When I looked at it, I started connecting many things because this was not my hope because I had joined a different faculty. So I will try to trace a little bit that consistent voice. I begin with it on my very day of baptism when I was baptized with my father coming with the usual name, which is Joel Kama. And when we reached the baptism, I was three. I suggested a new name, which was Bishop. And from there, my names became three, Joel, Bishop, Kama. <coughs> As I grew in that community, people praying, I also had a zeal of praying that was not like others, it had become unique to me. I wanted to pray, I wanted to do it every time. Even I used to visit people when they mention of their problems, I think of praying to that being at that very age, like I was at five. I remember that God started speaking to me through dreams. It was something special, I didn't know how it worked. When I was six, I had a dream. It was a dream concerning simple things at home. But when I mentioned it after waking up, what it was saying came to pass. It was together with a different hunger that I, became, that I began to again think about God in a new way, even at that age. When I was seven, I had another dream. And this is one of the dreams I call my best and earliest turning point. Uh, I didn't tell you, but in that age, I used to read the Bible. I used to read the Bible for memorizing it, but I was not reading the old chapters, I was reading the headings, I wanted to cram the headings that every person who will be preaching, I will be knowing where he's getting his someone from. So I wrote them down. Not only that, I used also to sit down and listen to radio sermons. I write them down. Uh, through all that, I had a dream then. <coughs> the dream was about the burning bush. It was a story as we know it, but it had some specific, specific message to me. When I woke up, I shared it to my parents, but not remembering everything. And with the briefing of my father, I don't know how it went, but I was asked to preach the same sermon the next Sunday in our parish. Those who know Rwanda, it is Matimba Parish. I preached my first sermon at that age. And while I preached it in my small short, uh, people became, began calling me to go to other churches to preach the same sermon. I didn't know actually what God has told me through the dream. I thought he just gave me the message to give to people. This voice I'm talking about through dreams was consistent even 
in 2016, I had the same voice connecting what was past in this way. That was my childhood. It included dreams and it included a different zeal and passion for prayers. But when I was also in my adulthood, I began to hear the same voice, but now connecting things that I had before in my childhood. It was in 2015 that I had the dream, the very dream that was <coughs> speaking about my name, Bishop. The dream took like 10 hours. I was debating with people, explaining for them why I'm called Bishop. I will not go in it all, but as I woke up, I connected the 2015 dream with the dream I had when I spoke to the bishop that baptized me that I want to be bishop. Another thing that happened in those years, it was an illumination of what God told me at my early seven years. God told me I was walking, I was alert, but I had an inner voice different from other voices. It told me <coughs> that it was you I was speaking to. I was not telling you to go and preach the sermon only. I was telling you to repent and come and serve me. As I connect those two things with other many dreams that I cannot explain here, I see my life having two things that I can witness about Jesus. One is that voice, constant and consistent. I remember it was on 12th August 2016 when someone came in my dreams and he shared me. He told me of a headmaster who was hiring a teacher and asking him not to disappoint him. It was a wrong story, but again, he reached out to me and he told me, I have trusted you, don't disappoint me. Someone has been speaking into my life in that way and he has been consistent over, of, about what he wants me to do for him. Second is the influence. I have had a silent influence of whom I don't see who is influencing me, but from my childhood, it has been of fluctuations also that I cannot recall the beginning. My reaction to the situation we grew in, the scarce situation, was to be selfish. And with all that, and other scenes that I cannot get time to mention here, I'm aware that transformation is infinite, but God has done something in my life about it. When I was in my usual studies before coming here, I had a zeal to continue do what God was telling me in my, in my secondary years and university years, but I didn't know how I will be doing it. I used to do it informally until I met some people and they encouraged me to join it in a formal way, to have some theological studies. And it was after then that I had a chance to know about Tyndale and God brought me here. I sense and I feel a progress in my spiritual life in this campus, in this seminary. I believe God will use it to change me and make me more like him. As I connect all the dots in my past life, I think God is calling me to do nothing else apart from being a bishop. He's calling me to be an overseer. I sometimes try to write it down, but I don't get a way of narrowing it down. But it looks like the overseers of the first early centuries of the church. And he has put Rwanda on my heart. I'm planning that if I finish here at Tinder, I may, if I get an opportunity to continue my studies. If yes or no, I will have to go back to Rwanda to serve it primarily.
pray for me that as the journey to be like Jesus continues, I may change and be like him more and accomplish this early mission he gave me at my very young age, at three on my baptism date. God bless you.